All right, I get a lot of questions about slip floats, so I'm gonna try to show you how to make one and why you might wanna use one. Basically, you're gonna need a bead, your main line. You get your bead on, you're gonna put a float facing upwards on your main line. And then the second to last step is to tie on a leader. Don't put a knot in it. So now we're going to tie on our leader. Okay, so basically what we've accomplished is we've tied on a leader, we have our little one-out hook, we have a free-floating cork with a bead right here. The reason that we have the bead is because we're going to tie a little piece of line about 15 feet up the line to stop this bead, which will stop the float. That's what makes it a slip float. The reason why we're going with 15 feet is we don't want the bait to go deeper than that. If it's in deeper water, we want it to float until it gets to like 13, 14 feet of water and sit on the bottom. So we're gonna go up the line and I'm gonna go about 12 to 15 feet. Right there should be good. So we're gonna add our bobber stop. I just have an extra like foot of line and I'm gonna make a uni knot on my line. So I'm gonna make a loop and I'm gonna make about eight to ten wraps here the reason why we want it that many wraps is we want to be able to tighten down this knot almost to where it can't move at all yep, tighten that down pull it really tight in both directions on the tag end So basically, here's my slip float under the water. I can't get it deeper, otherwise you wouldn't be able to see it. But you can see my leader it goes on for about three feet. And then about 10 feet up the line, 15 feet, we have this slip float. Basically, what we've done here is we've made a sliding adjustment float that adjusts to the water depth. We want our bait sitting on bottom. Whenever we get a run, this is gonna shoot away and tell us that we have a fish. Okay, so one of the reasons why we use this is if we break off a fish, there's a high likelihood we can find this float with that bobber stop and we can tie it back on and catch our fish. Another reason is if we have a gar go through a tree, we can cut it off, find the float, retie it and catch our fish. It also gives you a lot of information on where your gar is, where she's facing, if she's going this way, if she's about to turn around and go at you, even when you're sitting on the run, you want to be sitting directly as they're going away from you. So this can give you a lot of information you couldn't get any other way. You ready? Here's an example of using the slip float to find a fish that was broken off, retying the line and getting another chance to catch it. It's over it. there, it's going. You can see me catching up to the float, finding the end of the line, retying it. I got it, I got it. So 
I broke this fish off, got my line, tied it back to my other rod that's not broken, and I'm about to catch it. Without the slip float, I would have never had another chance to catch that fish. It's a big blue! 